one of the things that you want to do when you're leading an, a very large organization is you, you sort of want to give people a project and let them get on with it, all right? And, you know, because you've got lots of projects going on, if you're going to run every individual project, then nothing will happen. So you've got to give it away and say, right, you're the project manager, you're in charge. Now, the key thing, though, is that getting getting the infrastructure around that, if you like, delegation of, 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 of the project, um, you know, tasking, right? You know, what, you know, what, what are you asking them to do? Um, trusting them, and then the review process tending. Now, one of the things that I found quite interesting was on the projects, these are sort of projects where you've got a time, a quality, and um, uh, a cost dimension. A lot of them were sort of like physical buildings, like infrastructure projects. What I found quite helpful was the idea of saying, as part of getting the trusting tasking equation right, was to say, look, there are two of these things that you've got to deliver, right? So you've got to, let's make it up, but you've got to deliver the quality on this project and I've got to have it on time. Now, I'd like you to deliver it for 50 million pounds, but it's okay to go up to 60 million, right? Because I want the first two and I know that if I tell you to do all three, the only thing you can do, if anything slightly goes wrong, is come to me and say you've failed, right? And then we ain't got the right, I am not trusting you, right? Because, you know, immediately something happens, you've got to run back to me. So therefore, that sort of concept of, of in a sense, in the way that you task, building in the trust and the space to operate, I think is really important. But you've got to create an environment, if it's going to be 70 million <laughs> instead of the 60, that they feel that they can come back and say, you know, I, know what you, I know what the brief was, I understood the brief, but it ain't working, what do I do? Right? And you've got to open the, up the ability to do that. One of the, the worries is in any organization is that that doesn't actually happen. Right? Let's stay with these sort of made up numbers. You know, it is going to be 65. But the guy feels, or, or the woman in charge of the project feels, whoa, uh, you know, the, the, bo the boss gave me a very reasonable tasking, just very reasonable position, but, oh my goodness, it's going to be 65. And they don't tell you, and they don't tell you, and they don't tell you. Now, obviously, if you have 10 or 15 projects who don't tell you about the extra 5 million, you miss your profit forecast because you've got 10 times 5 gone wrong, Right. And that's where I think the sort of vigilant trust thing comes in, is you've got to know in a way that doesn't say, show that you're managing that it could come in at 65. Because what you can then do is go to the project manager and say, how's life? You know, what's going on here? Um, I hear the cost pressures are really, really tough on this project. You know, how, how's it going? And hopefully what you then get is... Well, I'm glad you asked that, you know, because it is tough. I think it's going to be 65. And then you can get into it without, and of course this is what happens in so many organizations, you know, it's 65, isn't it? And you haven't told me. You've got it wrong. You know, you've failed, right? Because, and have I done that, by the way? Because some people who who know me have, or might see this, of course I've done it, right? But it, it isn't right. Um, it's that vigilant trust that, that, that gets around that, that problem.